Welcome to our lecture online. Now we have another very interesting problem. Here we have a tube that's completely filled with water or liquid, whatever the liquid is. Inside the tube we have a wooden ball where the density of the ball is less than the density of the liquid and the tube is rotating about this axis right here. At the, it's rotating at angular velocity omega. And so what we want to do is find out what the pressure is inside the tube as a function of x. Let's say we want to know the pressure right there at a distance x from the axis of rotation, assuming that the pressure at the very beginning here is equal to p sub naught. So what is the pressure? All right, the way to do that is to think of this way. Let's draw a small little infinitesimal little slice in here. And the best way to do that is kind of, whoop, that's not a very straight line. So let's draw a straight line right this, a very small little skinny slice in here. And so we know that this is, of course, three-dimensional, and it's going to look something like that. Like that. All right, so a small little slice. And we know that the thickness of the slice is equal to a small little dx, and we know that the pressure across that little thing here will change, there will be a small little change in the pressure, let's call it dp, over that small little distance dx. Now, this piece here is going to, be, is going to experience a centripetal acceleration. And we know that we saw from the previous, a uh, uh, couple of videos ago, that the pressure in the x direction can be written as follows. The pressure is equal to the density of the liquid, times acceleration, in this case acceleration will be centripetal acceleration, times the distance away from the axis of rotation. But we know that centripetal acceleration is not going to be a constant. When we have a tank that's accelerating to the right at A, that's a constant acceleration that doesn't change. But here the centripetal acceleration is a function of distance away from the axis of rotation. It's not a constant centripetal acceleration, so therefore we cannot write it like this. We have to write it that a small little change in the pressure is going to be equal to the density times the centripetal acceleration at that location times a small little change in x. This is the proper way of writing it, not this. We cannot write it like that because the centripetal acceleration is not a constant. And so if we want to know what the pressure is at any point in time, we're going to have to add up the pressure differences of all the little slices. In other words, we're going to have to integrate. So we can then say that the pressure is equal to the, all the, the summation of all the little dps from zero to the point of, of interest, where we want to know the, um, the pressure. And so this is equal to the integral from zero to x of the density times the centripetal acceleration times dx. Now the question is, how do we write the centripetal acceleration? Well, the equation says that the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. And in this case, of course, the r will be the x, so that will be v squared over x. But what is the v? Well, the v is going to be, can be written, we know that v is equal to the radius r times omega, and in this case, of course, the radius is going to be x times omega. So then means that the centripetal acceleration can be written as v squared, which is therefore x squared times omega squared divided by x, which is equal to x times omega squared. And that can then be plugged into our equation here, so that the pressure is equal to the integral from 0 to x of the density times the centripetal acceleration, which is x times omega squared times dx. And then, of course, we realize that the density and omega squared, assuming omega is constant, are all constant. So we know that the pressure is equal to the density times omega squared times the integral from 0 to x of x times dx. And, of course, that can be integrated to be equal to pressure uh, density times omega squared times x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to x. So then we can write that the pressure is therefore equal to 1 half times the density omega squared times x squared. And of course, that is the pressure due to the rotation. But then we realize that the pressure already starts at some initial pressure, and then that, that this pressure here is the additional pressure due to the distance away from the axis of rotation. 
So we can say that pressure total is equal to the initial pressure at the very beginning plus the additional pressure, which is one half, times the density, omega squared times x squared. And that, of course, would be the total pressure, assuming, of course, that the initial pressure here is, is not equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, then this disappears, and then, of course, that would be the total pressure at any point away from the point of rotation. And that is how that's done.